This is the first photo I ever took with the Sea Star S50. M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And the crazy part? It was almost effortless. A few taps on my phone, and the telescope aligned itself, found the target, stacked the images in real time, and boom. A detailed image of another galaxy, light years away, right from my backyard. I remember staring at it, amazed at how easy it was. Just a few years ago, getting an image like this would have taken hours of setup, tracking, guiding, and post-processing. But with the Sea Star, it took minutes. Then something happened. I started seeing the exact same image over and over again. M31, 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 taken with the Sea Star, the Veonis Vespera, the Unistellar EV scope, the Dwarf 3 all looking incredibly similar. And suddenly, my image didn't feel so special anymore. But we've uh, improved methods since the old days, and now it always turns out well in the end. Never fails. It's complete. It reminded me of the Twilight Zone episode entitled, I Look Just Like You. In that story, individuality is erased. Everyone is made to look the same. And looking at the astrophotography community now, it felt strangely similar. It's easier than ever to produce a deep space image, but they all looked the same to me. That sense of uniqueness that pride in capturing something personal. It felt like it had been homogenized, packaged into an algorithm, and mass produced for anyone with a smartphone and a clear night sky. When I first started in astronomy and astrophotography back in 1981, I admired people like Akira Fuji, whose stunning images graced the pages of Sky and Telescope. I imagine the pride he must have felt knowing how much skill, effort, and time it took to produce those images. And now, with basically a tap of a button, I can produce virtually the same quality image all from my little corner of the planet. Smart telescopes have and will continue to change astrophotography dramatically. And it raises a question, where is all this going? For years, I would scroll through cloudy nights and see people proudly sharing the equipment they owned, the images they captured, and the processing skills that they had mastered. Now, that barrier is gone. The equipment is affordable, the data capture is automated, the only real differentiating factors now are border level and post-processing skill. And here's where my mind started spinning. What happens when Moore's Law catches up to post-processing? ZWO is innovating at an insane pace. Mosaics, automated denoising, smart scheduling, all things that used to take serious skill and effort are now just another feature update. So how much longer until post-processing itself becomes obsolete? Will we reach a point, sooner than we think, where all the PixInsight, Serial, and Photoshop skills we spent years perfecting are replaced by an AI that just does it for you? Imagine a future where you don't stack, you don't need noise, you don't color balance, you just pick a filter. Or even, where AI already knows your sentiment and your taste. So it just gives you the best possible result without you even asking. I started to wonder, is this a good thing? 
Astrophotography has always been a blend of science and art, but now the science part's becoming more and more automated. And if automation eventually handles everything, including post-processing, what's left for us to do? Are smart telescopes making astrophotography better, or are they just making it easier? And does that even matter? I thought about this a lot, because at first, I wasn't sure how I felt. But then, something changed. The more I thought about it, the more I realized Maybe I was looking at this all wrong. Maybe, just maybe, it's actually a good thing. In the next video, I'll share why I changed my mind. How smart telescopes might actually be one of the best things to happen to astronomy. And why this shift could be just the beginning of something much bigger. So if you've ever wondered where all this is heading, you won't want to miss this. What do you think? Is this the twilight zone of astrophotography or just the next step in its evolution? Let me know in the comments. Please hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in part two, Under the Stars.